let me first show the uh, experimentally obtained um, IV curve from the data sheet uh, and that is uh, presented here uh, at uh, these five different uh, irradiance levels. Now on this uh, I'm going to superimpose uh, the one that I um, copied from my MathCAD and that's going to appear uh, right here and uh, let me do that again. So as you can see it is uh, uh, an excellent match between the experimental and the analytical IV curves. Uh, at uh, almost all of the irradiance levels. Uh, so let me first uh, um, focus on the, uh, the the curve corresponding to 1000 watts per square meter. The uh, uh, blue, let me, okay, the black is the experimental curves and the blue is the uh, analytical curve and uh, they match uh, almost perfectly most of the conditions. Uh, this deviations is um, visible somewhere in this region. Uh, uh, somewhere near the uh, or just after the maximum power point uh, but at uh, most other conditions they match up perfectly well. Uh, this seems to be a small uh, deviation at uh, probably at the, the lowest irradiance level uh, but uh, mostly uh, it shows a, a very close match meaning the parameters that we estimated are accurate and uh, the, uh, the method, the modeling method is also correct. Now that we have the uh, complete module modeled in uh, MathCAD, uh, we can also get the power versus voltage uh, characteristics, which is something that was not shown in this particular data sheet. Um, so the um, PV curves obtained from MathCAD are, are shown here. The blue corresponds to the maximum 1000 watts per square meter irradiance and uh, uh, this corresponding to the lowest uh, 200 watts per square meter irradiance. Okay, next we will use um, these estimated parameters in a plex simulation uh, where we can uh, both get the IV PV curves as well as interface this PV module to uh, follow on um, DC DC converters or, uh, or, uh, or a PV inverter. Uh, so I will explain this simulation directly in uh, a plex uh, simulation file. So here is the uh, plex schematic corresponding, corresponding to this PV module. Uh, this current source represents the photon current and uh, the second current source is the uh, forward biased uh, diode current and uh, the expression for that is uh, given in this function block so that is um, uh, u2 is the um, the i naught uh, this is the the value that uh, we estimated uh, based on the equation that we derived and that was the um, uh, 33 nano amperes and uh, so it is i naught times exponential uh, bd u1 is the um, the measured voltage across the the diode uh, so that's VD divided by VT. So VT is A N S K uh, T over Q, and T also is given as another variable, but in this case it is um, uh, given as a constant 298. So that's the expression for the diode current, and uh, here is the uh, shunt resistance 402 ohms as we estimated. And um, um, I mentioned before in previous videos that this capacitor uh, is needed uh, to uh, break the algebraic loop that would otherwise be present uh, in the simulation. So uh, an extremely small value of capacitance like one uh, picofarad as given here is uh, sufficient. Okay. Then we have the series resistance uh, of value 0.2119 ohms as we estimated. And uh, so we measured the ex external current and uh, if you want to get the IB curves then we uh, sweep the external voltage from zero up to VOC. So if I go inside uh, this ramp uh, it is being uh, swept from an initial value of 0 up to a final value of 45. So the VOC for this module was 44.9 so that is what this number um, and I make the slope of um, the slope at which this voltage uh, ramps up uh, to be exactly 1 so um, uh, if I just plot the current versus uh, time that will also be the same as the current versus voltage because the time and the voltage have the same value because of the slope of 1. Then I take the product of the current and the voltage to get the power and uh, finally in this scope I can plot the uh, I versus time and the P versus time which are equivalent to I versus V and P versus uh, V. Okay. And uh, finally something about this um, um, the photon current and um, um, so it is equal to the short circuit current but since I want to um, uh, get the IV curves at many different irradiance levels I make the um, uh, this is this input as a as a variable. So in a in a simulation script, um, as shown here. 
so I define this insulation I give five different values and I define this parameter INS which is uh, this insulation in watts per square meter times uh, 1 10 to the minus 3 so when it is 1000 uh, this factor INS would be 1 when it is 200 it will be 0 0.2 so the corresponding short circuit current would be the value that you would expect under that particular irradiance level okay. so I can run this um, um, this simulation script then I will automatically get the um, IV and PV curves at each of those uh, five different irradiance levels so here are the resulting um, IV curves at the top and the power voltage curves at the bottom. Um, so clearly um, at the uh, 1000 watts per square meter, the um, um, op open circuit condition, the current equals zero exactly at, um, um, if you can really zoom in, you can see that it happens exactly at the 44.9 volts um, condition uh, as we expected from the data sheet. And, um, um, we can let's also zoom in in the PV curve exactly near the peak power point so that we submit here okay. so you can see that the peak value so this line here is 290 uh, watts so this is roughly uh, 290.7 um, or so okay. so the expected uh, PMP maximum power, power from the data sheet was a uh, 290.2 so we are very close to that and the voltage at which the maximum power occurs is roughly around um, I'll say about 30 um, 6 point something and uh, from the data sheet the VMP was uh, I believe it is 36.1 volt so we are fairly close to that as well uh, and of course in a, in a simulation of an entire uh, PV power conversion system we can uh, remove this uh, voltage source and um, uh, connect the uh, follow one DC DC converter or directly the PV inverter at this point to study the complete uh, PV system.